All right, welcome to our second installation on frequency masking mixing tips. Now, normally we think of EQ for solving frequency masking, of course, that's obvious, but a lot of times we overlook saturation. Saturation is a super powerful tool in mixing and it can totally help with frequency masking, but a lot of times it ends up making problems worse. Now maybe you've been in this situation where you add saturation to your guitar bus and now your guitar bus sounds way fuller and way better and that's awesome. But then you step back and take a listen and you're like, oh, my vocals aren't as clear now. That's a bummer. So now I'll add some more saturation to my vocals. Boom, they're back out in front again. That's great. But now my backup vocals are a little buried. So I'll saturate my backup vocal bus. And then all of a sudden, wow, my snare doesn't cut through the mix like like it did before. This is because compiling saturation on top of saturation is not the best thing for your mix as a whole. It'll make any one specific thing sound better, sure, and cut through the mix better, of course. But oversaturation leads to a lot of frequency masking problems. And exciters, which focus on the high frequencies, are fantastic for this. But you can't put an exciter on everything either as your solution or your mix is just gonna get too bright. So this video is not gonna be the warm fuzzy video where I show you an example of frequency masking and then add some saturation and the masking improves. We'll get to that at the end of the video, but between here and there, we're gonna mix ourselves in circles for a little bit and make things worse and explore the problems so we can better arrive at solutions in our own situations. So let's dive right in and start turning some knobs and making some mistakes. Now, we're gonna use four different saturators today for these examples. This is Klanghelm's IVGI, which is a type of tape saturation and tone booster tape saturator. So we have two different kinds of tape. This is the Tesla SE transistor saturator. And this is an exciter called Stimulate. The only one here that's not free is this Tone Boosters tape saturator. It might actually be free at this point, but if not, it's very affordable. Now, we're not gonna do any tube saturation today, but everything you learn here will apply to tubes as well. And we're gonna be taking a look at frequency masking with a lead vocal. But before we get into it, I do wanna show you that these four different saturators that are all on the vocal, that I have level matched them. Because if you don't level match, simply having an increase by one or two dB will make things sound way better. So we're not going to accurately understand our frequency masking issues if we're not positive that we've level matched. So right now all four of these are turned off. I'm going to play one little loop on the vocal so we can look at the LUFS over here, the loudness meter. So right around negative 16, negative 16.1 is where it hovers. And I'm going to turn on each of these saturators and show you that we're level matched. So we hit negative 16.1 on all four of these. So you know that what you're actually hearing is harmonic overtone content and not any differentiation in the volume because that's super important. And that's why we level match. And the masking in this little loop is occurring between the vocal and the lead fiddle. Take a listen. And with the full mix. This is a great example because if you can resolve masking between two different lead things going on at the same time, then you'll learn a lot by doing that. So we're gonna start with the same type of saturation on both of these and explore the problems that occur. One of the great things about this free IVGI from Klanghelm is it gives us a frequency response here. You can decide if you want the harmonics to target lower frequencies or higher frequencies. So. Let's take a listen to the fiddle and the vocal again in solo, and then we'll turn on both of these saturators with both of them highlighting the mid-range. Saturators on. And in the mix, both of them off. And both of them on. Yeah, so you can hear that both of them get fuller and louder, but the masking that's happening between the two of them, we still have kind of the same separation and clarity issue. They're both just a little bit more louder and more full, but we haven't really separated anything. 
So simply by accenting the harmonics on the fiddle at a different part of the frequency spectrum than we're doing with the lead vocal, we'll add separation and decrease the masking issue in theory, right? So if I turn the frequency response more towards the low mids on the fiddle and more towards the high mids on the vocal, which should increase the clarity between the two. So I'm gonna put them both back in the mid and then I will do that, then I'll adjust it. The vocal is more clear in the enunciation region, in the high mids, but we've actually kind of made the problem worse in the low mids. Now, in the last video, uh, frequency masking tips number one, we covered the fact that frequency masking tends to roll uphill. Now, we're talking about spectral masking here, not temporal. What that means is, is if we have a masking issue at, say, for example, 500 hertz, then everything above 500 hertz will also be affected by that masking to a degree, at least for a little ways up the frequency spectrum. The lower the frequencies that you have a masking issue, the greater your problem. If you have a masking issue around four or 5K, it's way less detrimental to the overall clarity and separation of two sounds than it is if it's at four or 500. In this example, giving more high frequency harmonics to the vocal, the vocal sounds more clear in the enunciation range because the enunciation and clarity of the vocal is up there in the high mids but we've actually made the masking problem worse in the mid frequencies because we haven't added harmonics into the lower part of the vocal spectrum, which would give it weight and help the mid range cut through, but we have done that to the fiddle. So the fiddle isn't necessarily a lot brighter, but it's more fuller and beefier, which is worsening the masking problem at the lower frequencies. So yes, by doing this, we are making the problem worse in the low mid frequencies, which is cascading uphill throughout the frequency spectrum. But it's interesting that the vocal is still actually more clear just because it got that high mid frequency boost. It's not more clear in the mids and low mids, but at the end of the day, because it's getting more harmonics in the high mids where the enunciation is, it does tend to pop out of the mix a little better like this. So this isn't necessarily a solution. It's, it kind of is. It's also kind of an enhanced problem. But with that in mind, listen to it again. I'm going to bypass both of these, listen to the original, and then I'll turn these back on. Yeah, see, the fiddle actually sounds a little louder relative to the vocal, but the vocal is a little more harsh, so it's cutting through at the high mids. So that's an interesting principle. Now let's do the opposite. Let's give the fiddle the boost at the high mids and the vocal the boost at the low mids. Now the vocal should be fuller and fatter, which will make it punch through the mix more, but the fiddle jump out on top in the clarity region of the high mids. So let's do that. We'll start with the, both these off and then we'll turn them on. Yeah, the vocal sounds fuller and deeper, but we have a different kind of problem now because the clarity of the fiddle is now too loud for the clarity of the vocal. The enunciation for the vocal is now kind of tucked behind the high mid clarity of the fiddle. So, so far we have really not resolved any of the masking problems. We've just kind of shifted our problems around. And with that in mind, let's simply turn the saturation on the fiddle off and just listen to the added saturation on the vocals at the low mids. And turn it up to the high mids. And more right down the middle. Yeah, and let's bypass both again. And the vocal one back on. 
So whether the saturation on the vocal is emphasized on the low mids, mids, or high mids, simply not having saturation on the fiddle is making a huge difference in terms of masking. And that illustrates the point where you might want to choose not to simply saturate everything. But that's still not the ultimate solution to the problem that we're looking for. We want to figure out how to saturate both in a way that helps the masking and doesn't make it worse. So let's put the saturation back where it sounds good on the fiddle. It does sound nice in the low mid frequencies in of itself. It warms up the fiddle and it does really help. So we're gonna leave that there. But now let's try a different tape saturator on the vocal. Just having a different tape saturator, even though they're both tape, makes a big difference because each plugin kind of has its own character and it is behaving differently. So let's listen to these again bypassed. And then when we turn these tape saturators on, we'll hear the difference in the sense that we have two different styles of tape saturation going. Let's compare them back and forth. See, you can hear that the frequency response is just different and it's a different style of tape. It's emulating a different speed of tape and the harmonics that are being introduced are just simply different. Now the tape saturator on the right, the high pass filter is set at 70, which basically means this is saturating the entire signal, but it's a different developer. It's doing it in a different way. They're both tapes, so they're both warm and silky, and that's great, but just by simply using a different tape saturator on each of these, even though they're both great plugins, it's a different character and it's a different style. So the lesson here is if you have two things kind of masking each other, don't use the same saturator plugin, number one. And number two, try to add harmonics in at different parts of the spectrum. Just by having a different tape on the vocal, they sound much more separate and distinct because each plugin is giving its own character. But now let's get rid of the tape on the vocal altogether and replace it with an exciter and see what happens. A lot of times we like the high air, like 12K and up is a great boost on a vocal, which you can do with an EQ, but you can also do it with harmonics instead of EQ by adding an exciter, which is basically a saturator that is only focused on the high end. So using an exciter instead of standard saturation can be a great tool for frequency masking. Let's listen to the vocal again dry with no saturation and then we'll turn on the exciter. Yeah, so that extra high end air cutting through is really nice. Let's do it again. Back on. So the added harmonics on the high end are great, but we're still missing the added harmonics in the mids and low mids on the vocal. And ideally we want both. The exciter on its own is just making the vocal sound a little too brittle. So let's try the tone booster tape in addition to the exciter. And we'll listen to them both off and then turn them both on. Yeah, that's very nice, but we still have the fiddle masking a little bit and still competing, but we're off to a better start. The tape is filling out the vocal and the exciter is adding the high end, but I still think it's far less than ideal, but we're getting somewhere by changing it up and being more mindful about where we're adding the harmonics. But now let's take a look at Tesla SE here. Transistor saturators add a couple fat low harmonics in, and they're really good on lots of different things. They can be great on kicks and snares, and they might not be the average go-to on a vocal, but the cool thing about this one is that it also offers the air feature down here. So this will fatten up the vocal with the low harmonics, but do it in a different way than the tape will. Let's take a listen to that, and then we'll crank the air up and take a listen to that. So again, vocal dry, no saturation, and then we'll turn on the transistor. Turn it on. Yeah, that is super nice. It's really silky on the vocal and it adds a lot of the low and mid character in there, which is helping it cut through, but not in a way that's increasing the masking with the fiddle. Let's listen to him soloed out with the transistor off and then we'll bring it on. Yeah, 
See, that is very nice. And again, this may not work on every vocal, but the point is to have different tools in your toolbox and try different things and see what is increasing the separation and clarity and what might actually be making it worse and muddying it up. Let's pop this in the mix with the transistor on. And now let's turn up the air. Instead of using the exciter, we're gonna use the air control on this guy. Nice, bypass. Back on. Yeah, so at least to me, that's my favorite solution so far for separating these two. If I want saturation on both, this tape on the fiddle targeted towards more of the low mids is really nice, but this transistor on the vocal with the added extra air on the top is really nice there as well. And now there's a lot less masking going on. Let's turn both these off and listen to our original and then we'll turn them back on. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now we're gonna add the other kind of tape from Tone Boosters on as well as the transistor. We'll start with both off and then we'll turn both on. Yeah, that's fantastic. And now we have saturation being introduced that is helping our frequency masking issue and not making it worse. This tape is hitting the entire signal, but in its own way. The transistor is targeting the lower harmonics and adding in the high air. And I bet if we added the exciter at this point, it would probably be a bit much and the vocal would just be brittle. Let's take a listen. Yeah, that's probably a bit much. Turn, this, turn the exciter off. Now let's turn the air off and get our high end frequencies just from the exciter. I'm gonna turn all of the odd harmonics off on the exciter and dial back the even harmonics and the amount. So we're just getting a hint of high frequencies from the exciter and then we'll get a hint from the air on the transistor. Let's take a listen. Let's add in a little more even and turn the exciter back up a touch. A little more. Sounds actually pretty nice. Let's add a little more air, just a hair. That does sound pretty nice, but I actually think I prefer it without the exciter and just getting the air from the transistor. Turn that up a little more. Yeah, the air from the transistor is less harsh to my ears than the high frequencies from the exciter. But that's a great solution right there. Let's turn all three of these off and listen to the original masking between the fiddle and vocal. Turn all three of these back on. Yeah, very nice. But there you go. If we're not thoughtful about the plugins that we're reaching for and how we're dialing them in to do our saturation, we can actually make our problems worse or at least not make things any better. So the things we got to keep in mind are what types of harmonics we're adding, what types of saturation we're using, whether it's tape or tube or transistor, and also what part of the spectrum that we're saturating. You also need to step back and say, how is this affecting my mix? And is it adding to any masking issues that I have? Or is it actually helping me resolve them? So let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for the next videos on masking tips. I appreciate you tuning in. If you're interested in more in-depth discussions on any of these topics, check out the Patreon. It's only five bucks a month and there's a lot of great question and answer going on over there. Thanks again to all my Patreons for all your support and I catch you all on the next one. Bye.